Have your children. Have your life. No one will come up with God except by me. There is no alternative. Good day, everyone. You are yet welcome to another wonderful edition of View from the Top. Uh, remember, we are on the series discussing financing the ministry, and it's been really, really, really exciting so far. I want to thank everyone who has been following this series. We've received comments on how much people have been blessed, on how much their eyes have been opened, and we want to give God all the glory. And today, um, I'm sure we're ready for yet another exciting edition. I believe we are with our papers, with our pen, and uh, with the Holy Spirit, of course, who is always with us. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to be our teacher tonight. Okay, so feel free to comment, um, feel free to ask any questions. And um, I believe that we're going to have a very wonderful session today. So thank you once again for joining us. If you haven't subscribed to our channels, please do so on Facebook. Uh, we are Builders of God Ministry. No, on Facebook, we are Kingdom Liberals Network. And on YouTube, we are Builders of God Ministry. Thank you so much. At this point, I'll hand over to our father, Pastor Dele Oyelero. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Queen. God bless you abundantly. We want to thank God for this opportunity we have again to be here to share the word of God with us. We, I want to believe that God has been blessing us from the little we have shared so far. And we are trusting God to help us also to push forward and to be a blessing again to God's people. Thank you for everyone that is also keeping faith with us, joining with us again today to receive the word of life. Because at the end of time, the Bible says men shall run to and fro and knowledge will increase. It's not just about scientific knowledge. It includes also the knowledge of the word of God. In fact, there it was referring to revelation of the word of God in Daniel 12, particularly. Praise God. But we know that the, 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 the depth of knowledge and the expanse of knowledge and the effusion of knowledge at the end of time covers every area of life. And I think we as children of God should be ahead in all of this. I'm trusting God that he will help us today to show us things from his wondrous word. I want to thank you everyone on the, that is in the live audience also for always being a, a available. So God bless us together. So last week we were able to, I think we rounded off where we were talking about, uh, talking about the issue of the sword. We had just told them to sell their cloak to buy sword, which is where many people have come to believe that, uh, oh, uh, Jesus Christ was asking people to, to buy weapons for self-defense. He was not telling them to go and kill anybody. But if there was anybody that threatened them, they could as well cut their heads off. But I believe God gave us understanding of what he was talking about. So in order to understand that scripture, because only scripture reveals scripture, they, when scripture don't reveal scripture, what we have is private interpretation. And Paul warned us very seriously against that. So it's the scripture that reveals scripture. We went to Luke 22. From where we are starting off again today, we read 35 to 38, which was where he gave the instruction. Then we went to Luke 12 to give us understanding of what he was talking about. So we're going to continue from there today by the grace of God. So let's read now. Luke 22, 35 to 38. Shall we go? King James? All right. Go ahead, please. And he said unto them, When I sent you without pulse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a pulse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garments and buy one. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And it was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an hand. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. You know that last week, I don't think we need to go over that. When he said it is enough, it was, it was a sign of exasperation. 
in their lack of spiritual understanding of what he was talking about. He didn't say the two sorts were enough. He didn't say they are enough. He said it is enough. Two sorts cannot be eat. He was more or less saying, look, enough of this stupid uh, talk that you guys are having. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, uh, today, I want us to dig deeper into that Luke 12. Because we did not just get to that verse 33. The flow of thought actually started far earlier. And I think it's convenient for us to start from verse 13. Uh, we added that. Luke 12. We're going to read, today we're going to read from verse uh, 13 up to around 40. Actually to 48. You can take to 48 in your notes. But I don't think we have the luxury of time to read up to 48. But we'll try to see what we can do between 13 and 14. 40 rather. So Luke 12 now. From verse 13. I think I would have wanted, I would have preferred that you read it through first. I think that will help us. We don't want to sacrifice uh, brevity for meaning. So I would like for you to read it through. Then we now start verse by verse and see what God has for us from, the, from those verses. So Luke 12, 13 to 40. And one of the company said unto him, Master, Speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things he possessed. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? because I have no room where to bestow the fruit. And he said, this will I do. I'll pull down my bands and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy his, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then what shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Verse 22. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouses nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thoughts can hard to his stature one cubit? If ye then be, if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the ladies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O ye of little faith, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give hams. Provide yourselves bags, which wax not whole. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about with your light burnings. And ye, and ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, 
and will come forth and serve them. And if ye, and if ye shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And these know that if the good man of the house had known what how the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man commits at an hour when ye think not. Thank you very much. Praise God. Now we see this is actually the scripture that is bringing out for us the understanding of what we read in Luke 22. He said they should carry purse, carry bag, and uh, carry sword. He said each of them should have a sword, but they had only two, and he told them it is enough. <laughs> Praise God. We can't say more of that. We can't say, we can't say uh, more about that. Now, you see that Jesus was introducing them to a change in the way that the ministry will be provided for. Or maybe, let me see, an improvement. When he was around, he sent them two by two to go into whatever city within Israel. And anyone that was worthy, they entered there. They ate whatever they needed to eat. They were taken care of and they left. With their, and they left their blessings behind. Now, but he's saying, people were hospitable to you then. But now, <laughs> they will not be that receptive. Therefore, you will need to take everything you can along. But I'm saying to us that Jesus was not implying that they should go and gather money. They should go and get sword for self-protection because God can no longer protect them. Praise God. And I made it clear the last time that my course here is not to talk about whether somebody who has a, a I mean, protocol officers around him, whether he has faith or he doesn't have faith, it may be wisdom that is applying. And praise God. So I'm not here to talk about that. Then I'm talking about issues of provision. And we saw what Jesus said. That's what we are trying to dig into. Where did it start from? It starts from a man that wanted to follow him. Let's start 13 now to 14. This is the bridge between the intertestament provision and God's provision for the New Testament ministry. This is where Jesus is bringing the bridge. Let's see it now. Verse 13. 13 to 14. Yes, yes. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? That was a man that was looking for security in this life. He wanted to secure his inheritance. <laughs> Praise God. And he needed Jesus to put in a word for him. So that his brother could release what he thought was his due. And Jesus told him, I'm not here for such frivolities. I'm not here for such things that are mundane. I'm here for things that are more important. I'm here for spiritual things. I'm here for eternal things. And these physical things we are talking about are too temporal. They are too ephemeral for me to be engaging my life in. Hallelujah. So we see he was showing them, he was showing this man there that this is the least of your problem. Whether they gave you any inheritance at all or not, if you have Jesus, you have everything. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. So it was, that, that's where, that was where the discussion started from. It was covetousness that made him to want to hire Jesus to put in a few words for him. <laughs> And in verse 15, Jesus responded. What did he say? He said unto them, not to him alone now. So it, was, it became a message to his followers now. You know, Jesus was a master at seizing teaching moments. So he seized the teaching moment to teach all of them. Yes. Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Hallelujah. So he laid the message clearly that your life does not depend on what you have or what you don't have. 
It does not depend on what you have put together. So don't bother yourself about it. Hallelujah. Now, in 16 to 21, that was where I gave a parable to explain what he was talking about. To show, you know, that parable was not talking particularly about covetousness, but it was talking about where they put their confidence for tomorrow. Remember, we are talking about Luke 22, where Jesus was telling them how to make provision for their future. This Jesus had earlier told them here, and the, the, this parable of the rich fool showed us that, I mean, accumulating wealth for the rainy days, as we say it, and putting confidence therein is useless. Let me repeat. I did not say putting things aside for the rainy day is a sin. I said accumulating wealth at the expense of needs around us in the name of in the, for the rainy days is completely condemned by the scriptures. Jesus here was showing how much it annoys God that a man can put confidence in what his hands can do in his sweat, as they say it, for his future, for his tomorrow. <laughs> a man is planning for tomorrow, he doesn't know whether he's going to see tomorrow. James 4 verse 4 says, look, your life is like vapor. <laughs> vapor comes up now and disappears immediately. That is how your life is. He said, you can't just be saying, oh, this year, next year, tomorrow I will do this, except you say, if God pleases, or if God spares our lives. That means that you recognize that life belongs to God. It's not yours. Have you heard people say, it's my sweat? And I keep asking them, does a dead man sweat? So whosoever gave you the ability to live, and to uh, dare any sweat, then that is actually the person that has what you think you have. The Bible says, is there anything you have that you have not received? So why do you glory? Jesus is, was here redirecting the heart back to the giver of all things. The one, the Bible says, is the father of light, with whom there is no shade of variableness of turning. The Bible says all good and perfect gifts, they come from the father above. And that is what is referring to the And that was what James was also referring to in James 1 verse 17. We are not going to read that. James 1, 17, notice for your course, for your referencing. Now, so, Jesus was saying here, look, no matter how much you are able to amass for tomorrow, the honors is on God to determine whether you even see tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. And all that you even piled up, that you accumulated, when there are needs all around you, you close your eyes. You say, look, I have to make some, put things aside for, this, for tomorrow. No problem. When you do all that, even if you see tomorrow, who told you that fire will not burn off everything? And you will still have to come back and trust in that God. May the Lord help us to learn these lessons. So that parable of the rich fool was to show us that putting confidence in accumulated wealth would not suffice for any child of God. Our confidence should be in God. And I'm not saying we should live recklessly and not make provisions for the time to come. But you must not make enough provision to make you to have confidence in them. A man of God once said, he preached a message, they call his name Neil Frisbee. He preached a message, three-way confidence. And in another place, he called another one, uh, 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 how to prevent ourselves from sneers, something like that, I will remember it, now, about, about sneers. He said, by the time you have wealth enough, that you cannot truly from the heart pray, give us the day our daily bread. He said, then you have to throw your weight away. <laughs> if you get to the point that you can, he said, daily, daily contact prevents sneers. Daily contact prevents sneers. He said, if you get to the point that you are wealthy enough, that you cannot sincerely and truly say, Father, give us this day our daily bread. Because the pantry is so full, we don't need God. <laughs> he said, that is the time to throw the weight away. And that means that you should use it to bless others. Because your confidence is now in that word, no longer in God. And that was exactly what Jesus was speaking against here. That we should never put our confidence in accumulated wealth. We sounded contrary to what he was saying in Luke 22. But actually what he's saying is what he had said here in Luke 12. 
That's the same thing he was saying. But he was speaking spiritual language to them. But they were too carnal to understand what he was saying. That was why he said, it's enough. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that is uh, the, uh, talking about the aspect that talked about the, the rich fool, as they call it, as God that parable. That's 16 to 21. Praise God. So that clearly shows that Jesus couldn't be telling them here not to trust in accumulated words and be telling them to go and carry their bag and their purse literally in Luke 22. I don't know whether I'm communicating. Are you sure? You understand what I'm saying? Let me briefly hear what you understand. Vis-a-vis -vis Luke 22 and the instruction I give them in 36 that they should take their paws, take their bag, and set their cloth to have a sword. Okay, um, maybe we need a bit more explanation there. But what I can understand is that in Luke 22, the dimensions have changed because Jesus was no longer going to be with them. So it was getting them ready for the tough time that was, you know, that was with them at that point because he was going to be crucified and he knew that he was going to be persecuted and all that. So I believe that's why he said to them that they should carry their bags, carry their balls, take okay, okay. whatever they have. You know, but in this uh, Luke 12, he has really established the fact that, see, you don't put confidence in any of those things. I am your source. I am your provision. And I'll provide for you. So that, that's what I, I can understand. But maybe you can. Oh, thank you. you. Well, well, let, let me... me let, Let me, me clarify it further. That's why I needed the feedback. Now, I am saying that what he said in Luke 22 was exactly what he said here. But taking it prima facie, what you see is a contradiction of what he earlier said here. In that place, it, more or less, it was saying, look, how far you will go will depend on, your, on the size of your purse and your bag. And how well you are protected will depend on how you can use your sword to defend yourself. There is no scripture that supports that anywhere. So it couldn't have been talking literally. Praise God. So the same message was put into them that it's like, no matter how big a purse you have, no matter how big a bag you have, no matter how much, how, how long a sword you have, they will not be sufficient for this next phase. That's the message. But it looked like he was saying, that is all you need for the next phase. <laughs> Do you get it now? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, that, that was the message he was passing to them. Praise God. Now, all right. From, Luke, from verse 22, Luke 12, 22 to 28, he began to repeat those things that we read that, that, that are written in Matthew 6, which we are all familiar with. Take no thought for what you will eat, what you will drink, or what you will wear. But he was telling them here <laughs> that they should take it to what they will drink or yeah, literally in Luke 22. That's why I said, okay, take your bag, take everything. I want to put on note. Most of the time, God was speaking to the Jews throughout his ministry. Most of the time. Whatever he told them to do were things that they could not do. Because he came to point attention to himself as the one that was sent to save them, to rescue them, to help them do what they couldn't do. That was what he tried to do throughout. Praise God. If you remember the, 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 man, the young ruler that came to him, the man said, what can I do to inherit, to inherit eternal life? He said, look, all you need to do is to keep the commandments. He said, he said but I've kept them all from my youth. I don't know. He said, okay. Jesus, Jesus should have said, oh, you are cool. He said, okay. Since you have kept them, he repeated the whole of the laws. He said, I've kept all of them. He said, fine. Go and sell all you have. Then give to the poor and come and follow me. Do you see that? That was the same thing he was telling disciples in Luke 22. But it looked like the very opposite. <laughs> Go and get all you could get. It was like Jesus was saying, go and get all you could get. Then you can go and do my work. <laughs> but he told that man, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. Then come and follow me. Then you cannot talk about entering eternal life.
Praise God. The Bible, wants him, the Bible said, because he had so much, he went away sorrowful. But remember, Jesus said, and Jesus looked at him and he loved him. Praise God. <laughs> Despite the fact that he couldn't do it, he loved him. So he was not trying to set him up for failure. He was only showing him that by your works, you can never please God. That was what he did mostly throughout his ministry, especially when he was talking to the Jews, when he came to issues of righteousness. He tried to show them that their righteousness could not, by any means, stand before God. Praise God. And I think that was more or less like what was happening here in that Luke 22. So, verse 22 to 28, he began to tell them, he gave reasons how that they needed not to worry about what to, eat, to wear, what to eat, what to drink. He said, you should not worry about those things. He said, because it is the Gentiles that worry about such things. So if he took Luke 22 literally, it would mean that Jesus was telling them to become like unbelievers. <laughs> they should worry about what to eat, what to drink, in fact, to defend themselves. Hallelujah. He was telling them there, he said, take everything you can get along. Whereas he was more or less telling them that, look, no matter how much you take, it cannot suffice. And that was why you saw when the Holy Spirit came and gave them understanding. In Luke chapter 2, 44, the Bible said they sell, they sold everything. Now the empowerer had come. Hallelujah. What that rich, rich young man couldn't do, now the Holy Spirit had empowered them. They were able to sell and provide for those that did not have. They only retained only what they needed. Praise God. That was exactly what happened. That meant that they got to the point that they had to depend on God, not on what they stood. God still got what he wanted. Our oh, glory to God. Thank God for the empowerer. Thank you for our helper. Thank God for our helper. Glory to God. So they sold everything they had, and they brought everything to the apostles' feet, and they distributed among everybody. Oh, don't worry, everybody. Just have a good time. God will provide what God will use tomorrow. Glory to God. So they, had their, they were hanging on their faith for their sustenance. They were not depending on what they thought. Hallelujah. So what, why are we making so much a force about these things? It is to show us that Jesus showed us clearly that in the New Testament that he was trying to introduce them to from the intermental provision here. He was saying to us that all that we need to take along is our faith. It's as simple as that. But many of us don't want to exercise our faith. We think that because we are pastors, all we need to do is to go to the pulpit and harass the people and get money from them. I did not see one place where Jesus harassed anybody to get anything to fool the bill of his ministry. And I'm not saying it's wrong to make announcement of the need you, you have in the ministry. I am not saying it is wrong of you to ask of them that God has sent to you or that you have been sent to or that you have ministered to or whose heart God has touched to back your ministry, to give to you the work of God in your hands. But I'm saying by the time it gets to the point of harassment, intimidation, to the point of manipulation, to the point of uh, domination, then we are playing witchcraft. Praise God. Those of you that know that God was the one that kept you alive until this year, come and give offering. That is witchcraft. That's witchcraft. Because God kept all all. So if I don't bring offering, it shows I'm saying, so everybody will be looking at me that I'm saying that I kept myself. That is pure witchcraft. That's what we are saying we should, not, we should not do. To give honor to the name of our God. It's an honorable God. This God is honorable. And we don't have to dishonor him because of our needs. We need to trust God. The fact that we are pastors does not mean that we should not trust God. It is not every time God is expecting us to get what we need from the people we are ministering to. He uses other means also to bless his people. The same way he blesses others who are not ministers. They don't have access to the money that you have access to because you have sold to the life of the people spiritually. But God also meets their needs. We are also children of God before we are servants. 
So we also have the opportunity of using the same medium, media, that these people also use to get their needs met. And it is one thing, faith, it is not harassment from the pulpit. Praise God. It is not every need that you have that God is asking you to go and announce in church and put the people under undue pressure to bring money to meet your needs. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. 22 to 28. He said, take no thought. What you are going to wear, what you are going to do, whatever. Be and he gave reason. Because all those things will not survive. Verse 29 to 30. Verse, yeah. Verse 39 to 30. Can we read that? Yes. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all those things do the nations you see of that? the world... You said, don't be of doubtful mind. That is opposite of faith. So he's telling them what you need is your faith. Trust me to supply your needs. Listen to me. A lot of times we deny ourselves God's blessings because, because we, we, we choose the avenue that God will use to bless us. There is a church member that has like 15 cars in his garage. And you are asking God, go and touch the heart of brother Joel to give me one of his cars. And God does not want to use Brother Joel. Because tomorrow, Brother Joel will save not for him. He will not have no ministry. <laughs> I've been given a suit before many years ago by a brother who I've, I'd never seen wearing a suit. Not to talk of knowing quality suit as much as he bought for me. I'd never seen such quality dress on him before. I, if I had money, I couldn't buy that suit with my money. Praise God. Listen. Uh, why should God send Elijah to a dying widow with her son? Why not to a billionaire in town? The so-called ministry says you have to politicians. Are you sure it's God or money prompted? <laughs> Praise God. The Lord knows he had to. And you know, you know, Paul said in Romans 2, 16. He said, in the day that God will judge the secret of men's heart according to my gospel. <laughs> there, will be, there, will, there, will be, there will be a lot of casualties. Because God will judge the secret of men's hearts, not just their acts, but the secrets of their hearts. And you remember also in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Bible says some men's good, they go before them. But those that are, 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 are some, some men's evil, they come before them. Some come after, so for good. He said, those that, that, that are delayed, they will not forever be concealed. Because the Bible says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, the Bible says, judge, not, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Then shall all men have the praise of God. Glory to God. Man of God, woman of God, let's check our hearts. What is motivating what I'm doing? What is motivating what I'm preaching? What is motivating my exhortation? Is it the desire to get to, to the pocket of the people? Or is it the message that God has sent me? Those are the questions we need to ask and make necessary amendments. There's nobody that does not miss it. All God is asking for is a change. The Bible says in Isaac 17, verse 30, thereabout, He said, the times of ignorance, God has winked at it. But now, is calling every man unto repentance. May the Lord grant us a heart of repentance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, he's talking about life of faith. He said, don't be of doubtful heart. Hallelujah. If you go to Matthew 6 of that same rendition we are not reading, he talks about your life. Why are you taking thought for your life? And he told them to go and buy a sword. Can you see that that's contrary? <laughs> On the service level. He said, don't, take, don't bother about your life. And they the apostles understood all those things. You knew practically all of them, but John were killed for the faith. They didn't, their life didn't matter to them. Paul also said, when we get, when we get to New Testament provision, you will see it. In Acts 20, 24, Paul said, he said, my, I, he said, my life means nothing to me. All I desire to do 
is to give effective witness to this gospel of the grace of God that has been committed to me. My life doesn't matter. He said, I don't hold my life dear to me. Ah, glory to God. Praise God. So this was not about uh, getting a gun or getting a sword to protect themselves. So Jesus was actually more or less speaking to them in parables, but they were taking it literally. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I want to repeat that we are men of God. But before we became servants of God, we are sons of God. And we have a responsibility to use our faith to pull whatever it is that we need from the Father, which is according to his will. Praise God. Hallelujah. 31. What? Instead of worrying and be of that word, what do you say you should do? But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all those things shall be added unto you. Glory to God. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. By the time we talk about the gospel of the kingdom versus the of the God of grace of God, we will talk more about this. Because here we see that there is something here that we need to look at more deeply. When we get, when we get there, we'll talk about it, not in this series. But look out for our, our teaching on the, what is the gospel of the kingdom of God that the Bible says will be preached around the world for a witness before the end will come in Matthew 24, verse 14. That series is on. By the grace of God, we will explain all these things there. But let's take the means for here. It says, seek rather the kingdom. Don't seek your protection. Don't seek your self-preservation. Trust me for all that. Your job is to seek the kingdom. To make your life to be a jurisdiction where God reigns. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 33 to 34. Sell that ye have and give ah. hands. Can you see now? In order to do what he was saying, to help them to be forced to use their faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> to help them to be forced to use their faith. He said, yes, you, you have already. But there is that temptation for you to always fall back on what you have rather than make faith your first and last option. <laughs> so he said, sell all that you have. Give it away so that your confidence will not be in them. But the other place he was telling them, gather all you can get, which was not what he meant. Go ahead, please. Sell that ye have and give hams. Provide yourselves bag which wax not old. Do you see that now? The bag he was asking for was not the bag that they had. Their own bags that they had were waxed old. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so he couldn't be referring to that bag. This is the bag he was referring to. Do you see it now? And how do you get this bag? By, by removing your confidence completely from your bag and your purse. And how do you do that? To help yourself, you meet the needs of others. Hallelujah. And live life of op op opulence. You, you, you share with others. Hallelujah. So that your confidence will be in God. You have to trust God to meet your needs. Hallelujah. Finish it up, please. Okay. Um... A treasure in sell that ye have and give us. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. But where your treasure is, there yeah, will your heart be also. Also, also. So, so it, it matters to Christ where their hearts were. If they took all their bag along, they took all their purses, and they had a soul with them, and a vagabond approach them with a street or chain, or a robber approach them, what do you think will happen? <laughs> blood will flow. Blood must flow. <laughs> blood must flow. Because his whole life is in the bag and in the purse. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Now, in 35 to 40, that was where he began to talk about the transition. He's not transitioning them. All right? From this uh, this uh, uh, um, economy to a different economy. All right. So when you have done when you have done all that I've said before, then you are ready for the life you'll be living after I leave. Maybe we should just read this to show that he was introducing them to the same thing he was saying in Luke 22 in this Luke 12, but they couldn't get it. Praise God, and it was even clearly stated here. 
So you had, to, you had to put it in parable in Luke 22, 35. Let your loins be girded about, and your light burning, and ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come... Thank you, thank you. I think we have enough. It will show us, it was showing them what it was going to be like after he left until he will come back. That's the New Testament. So before we even get to the proper New Testament, he was already in the Intertestament showing them how their needs will be met after he had left. So this is the perfect transition from the Intertestament to the New Testament. He was showing them how he was going to meet their needs after he had gone, which will now be the New Testament proper. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's go back to our Luke 22, 35 to 38 now. We are not reading. But I want to say one or two things before we leave there completely. In that scripture, he said, when I sent you two by two, and I said you should not take anything along, did you lack anything? They said nothing. He said, but now I tell you. You know the difference? That time was a one-time mission trip of a few weeks, maximally. This was going to be a lifetime mission. So if they needed, if faith were to be in hands, you didn't get two ounces of faith <laughs> for two weeks. They would need all the faith they could gather. That was the message he was sending to them in that message, in, in that Luke 22. You needed faith that time to believe that somebody would take care of you. You needed faith that somebody would provide if you needed extra clothing. But this time you don't even have a single clothing in, if you didn't have a sword. Praise God. But I think you didn't even have a bag or a purse to even take along anyway. And now you are going to have more hostility than hospitality. Therefore, you will need all the faith you can get. That is what the old message I can say there. Praise God. Do you see that? There's a difference between one trip mission and a lifetime mission. You will need all the faith you can gather to be able to make it. Praise God. Uh, and he also made it understand. In that scripture also, we see that if what Jesus meant was literal, then it will mean then that all the other teachings of the scriptures are wrong. In Philippians 4, 6 to 7, the Bible makes us write that to understand that we needed to make our prayers and supplications known to God with thanksgiving. He said, and, and God himself, the, we garrison our hearts and, and minds by his spirit. Praise God. And, and give, uh, by his peace, rather. Hallelujah. So, he said we should pray and leave it and go and play. After you are prayed, you don't pray. You play. Glory to God. After you have prayed, you play. Hallelujah. When you pray and pray, then pray and pray, then pray and pray, you are not believe. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you are prayed, you get to a point, you know that this is settled. All you do is to give thanks and go and play. Glory to God. <laughs> you see, so teachings that we see in the scriptures, they, they are contrary to all those things. In 1 Corinthians 9, 7, you know he was talking about New Testament provision, not in the Testament now. So we could as well go to New Testament to show that he couldn't mean, mean it literally. In 1 Corinthians 9, 7, what did he say there? He said, no man goes to war at his own expense. Now it's more or less taking them to go at their own expense. I think I've explained enough. <laughs> Who go at a warfare any time at his own charge? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Who planted a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Okay, okay. Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Thank you. That, that, I, I needed that to show that there it was more or less like it was telling them, go to the war front at your own expense. However, it was the opposite that I was telling them. 
so far for the intertestament and the bridge between the intertestament and the New Testament. So let me use the rest of the day today to introduce us to the proper New Testament gospel financing. Galatians 6 verse 6. I would like to take that from King James Amplified and New Living Translation. Galatians 6 6. King James, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. You will have thought that means that you should just tell him, repeat what he told him. He said communicate. You know, our use of the word communicate today is just about words. Whereas that word is richer than that, and it was more used more for other things in Old English in which this was written. That's why it's needed for us to see other versions that, that brought it out clearly. Okay. He says you do what? Contribute to... King James says, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him. He is talking about those who are benefiting. Communicate with your teacher in all good things. All good things. Praise God. Somebody might interpret that and say, oh, he's saying that I should tell the teacher how much his blessings, how much his teachings are blessing me. No. <laughs> that, could, that could be a way, but it's more than that. All good things are more than that. Now, so we will need to see from Amplified. Then it will live in Amplified. Amplified. The one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual and material support. Con contributing to what? His spiritual and material support. One of the things you hold your ministers is to say, uh, Daddy, uh, 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 let's look at this thing again. No? That thing you said on Sunday, I think the scripture also says, I can't seem to be able to blend the two edges of the leaf together. I, I would like to have you share with me, maybe after now. Praise God. That's part of communication. It's not just, uh, I was blessed, which is very good and encouraging. All right? It was not, it's not just about uh, buying a car for pastor and giving him money. Praise God. And giving him food. And sponsoring his birthday. It's more than that. It is part of contributing to his spiritual well-being. You, that's why you have to also be a student of the scriptures. You are not just a receptor. Praise God. You are also a student of the word. Receiving from God also, not just from him. So that you can be a helper of your pastor. You can be a helper of those that teach you also. That is part of how you communicate in all good things to them. Contributing to their spiritual and material support. You don't allow them to lack so that they will now abandon uh, the work, either partially or totally, to go and fend for themselves because they have to keep soul and body together. Praise God. And that shows that God doesn't want that to happen. That's why he should support them. So he will not be sinning if he has to do that. Rather than to be using gimmicks to collect money from you, I would rather go and walk. Praise God. And do what I can in ministry. After that. Praise God. God said for him to be able to put his attention properly and give you the best. Make sure that you remunerate him properly. So all good things include all that we have mentioned. And part of all good things is what is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12. That is something that you hardly hear people talk about in terms of how to encourage a minister. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 to 15. I think it's better we take it from message. We are still talking about contributing to the support of those that teach you. This is Thessalonians 5, from verse 12 to 13. Okay, verse 12. And yeah. now, friends, we ask you yeah. to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of hudging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. Get along among yourselves. Each Be of at peace among yourselves. That is part of good reward you can give to a minister. 
Don't be quarrelsome. Don't be dismissive. Don't be unduly ambitious. Those are the things that cause division. Don't try to press somebody down so that you can look taller. All those things will not make his ministry to prosper the way he ought to prosper. Because there will be schisms in the body. Everybody will be trying to show himself. And the Bible says where there is envy and strife, all manner of evils will follow. By not living your life in envy and strife, you are actually communicating good to the minister. You are contributing to his ministry. You take things to just allow peace to reign. You are actually contributing to his ministry. Being at peace among yourselves is a vital way of communicating good things and creating the right atmosphere for the prosperity of the ministry of that man. Praise God. He said, overwhelm them with appreciation. These are the things that God is asking for. Hallelujah. And you know, those of you who are, maybe you are in the, in the knowledge industry. All right? You, you, you trade knowledge. You see that the more people appreciate, the more people value what you are doing, the more you are able to give to them. Praise God. So when we are not doing this to the ministers, we are actually hampering ourselves. We are not enjoying him. We are enjoying ourselves. We are limiting our blessings. So that is how much abundantly God has provided for us. Can you hear the renditions or the, 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 the way the word was put there? He said, overwhelm them. How, what else are we looking for? Praise God. As ministers. He said, overwhelm them with appreciation. Can, Can we, we take it again? I think it's true of 13. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. Get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you want the freeloaders to get a move on. Thank Gently you. Gently encourage. Okay. No, that, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Now, let's go back to the New Living Translation of that Galatians 6 6. I'm talking about the provisions that God has made for the New Testament believer. He said, all the saints that we teach should communicate back to us in all good things, spiritual and material, carnal things of this life, because spiritual things are sown into their lives. He said they should sow carnal things in the life of the teachers. Listen to me, this is not 10%. This can be 80% at times. There are times it can be 5 This is not 10%. Listen to me, 10% cannot push the gospel to the ends of the earth. But we think we are smart. <laughs> God made better provision for us than the Old Testament believers, than Old Testament priests. Hallelujah. He said, share with them in all good things. He said, overwhelm them. He didn't say limit it. It's not 10%. He said, overwhelm them with appreciation. Hallelujah. What do you understand by overwhelming? Is it 10% that is overwhelming? Oh, -ho. if we stay by these scriptures, we will never have cause to use gimmicks. We will never have cause to use spiritual uh, acrobatics. We will never have a need to profit like money from people's pockets. If we do our job well, and people are well taught about their responsibilities, it's not that we do that every Sunday and harass them. No. Once they are taught, they are taught. The rest you leave for God to move upon their hearts. As it pleases God, they give to you and they give to the ministry. That is the standard of the scriptures. We limit ourselves highly, but we think we are being smart. But God has made better provision than what we want to die having. Let the Lord give us understanding of this in the name of Jesus. NLT. NLT. Galatians 6, 6, NLT. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Can you hear that? All good things. Not just false fruit. Not just tight. Which were purely food most of the time. Say all good things. Good clothes. Good cars. Good shoes. Good houses. Share with them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. This is far bigger, far better than what even the 
great provisions that God made for them in the Old Testament. Their provisions were basically food. Yes, they were able to have some other things as I showed up from Nehemiah. However, it was basically to meet their daily basic needs. Praise God. But this is abundance of prosperity that God has opened up to his servants here. Ah, may the Lord give us understanding and the church of God together in Jesus' name. Let's look at another scripture where we see God's provision for this assignment believer. I mean, for this assignment minister and ministry. 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 18. We're going to read that from about five translations. We may, be ha we may have to be rounding off on that note today. Yes. K We're going to be reading KJV, NLT, Good News, Amplified Classic, and the uh, Common English Bible. Let the elders that rule well that be is what I'm looking for. counted worthy of double honor, Thank especially you. they who labor in the world and doctrine. Adding doctrine. Thank you. Say, so let them be counted worthy of double honor. It does not mean when you prostrate for those who just lead, then you prostrate two times for those who teach <laughs> word and doctrine. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> if you understand what he's talking about. And if you are not satisfied, you think, oh, all these versions, they have come again. Go to the lexicon. Check the meaning in the Greek dictionary. That will be enough to convince you. So, in, new, in, in, in the New Living Translation, is that elders who do their work well should be respected. Can, can we read NLT? Elders who do their work well should be respected and paid well. <laughs> and I'm paid, paid well. Somebody say paid. 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 I say I shout, say shout paid. 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 <laughs> Praise God. They should be paid well. It's a deal to them. You are not doing them special good. You are giving them what is due them. See provision. Why will I leave this and be going back to old retirement? For what? For what? Listen to me. Those people who enhance the God to get to the end of the earth, it is not tight they are paying, no. They are giving to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. They give super abundantly as New Testament has recommended. Praise God. This is God's provision in the New Testament. We actually so change ourselves trying to be fast, to, trying to be smart. So he said, pay them well. Good news says, consider them worthy of double pay. Double pay. Amplify said they should be counted worthy for adequate financial support. Hallelujah. Easy to read Bible says, pay them properly. Pay them properly. Message says, give a bonus. Hallelujah. Message says, give a bonus. Can you imagine? Give a bonus. That means apart from the regular payments for being your leaders, those that teach, they should be remunerated separately. Apart from the general payment for leadership, they should be paid extra for that extra duty of searching the world to teach you to feed you spiritually, not just provide the leadership in terms of administration. Glory to God. So, Amplified Classic says, honor, can they worthy for honor and adequate financial support? Honor and adequate financial support. Common English Bible says, pay them double. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, fellow servants in the vineyard of the Most High God, I want to tell you that the provision God has made for us is far better than what he made for the priest. He gave them tight. God says you are bigger than tight. Glory to God. You are bigger than tight. God has told his children to share and overwhelm you with appreciation. That cannot be tight. It's something bigger. Hallelujah. And I have, as I told you, 
It is not every one of them that we obey. Praise God. And the truth is that God will not kill them. The him that the Bible says, if a man gives, you shall be given unto him. Praise God. The truth of the matter is that what God has provided for us in the New Testament is more than enough. We don't need to go back and be looking for how to make extra money. God has made a abundant provision for us. That shows how much value God places on you. I want to tell you, my brother and sister, it is not too late. We can take our steps, our steps, live by the scriptures, we will prosper. Praise God. I've repeatedly said, I'm going to say it again, a lot of contentment is needed, a lot of patience, waiting on God for his timing. With that, with this kind of knowledge, brother, you will do ministry without un unnecessary gray hair. God bless you abundantly for bearing with me. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. What an awesome session tonight. You know, this, this teaching is not just for ministers. It's actually for the mm -hmm. body of Christ because we are learning. Thank you. You know, I've had to learn so much. So it's not just for ministers. It's also for believers to understand their responsibility and what God um, requires, what God expects us to, to do, how he expects us to relate to the people that labor over us. Thank you so much, Pastor Dede Hilary, for this, um, bless you, for this sure. um, message. We are really grateful. God bless you more abundantly. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We hope to see you again next week. Remember, it's View from the Top. God bless you. Thank you. Have your life. No one will come up with God except by me. There is no alternative.